I had a pool ball through my bollocks on my 18th birthday, and I've been egged a few times and sat on fire. I can't uh, fish with dad ones. Uh, the main ones. Oh, oh yeah. Sure, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's all bulbous. The balance barely comes out anymore. <laughs> it's a fucking bomb site. Um, I hope someone else dies. My family's going to get another few weeks off. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's one of the best comedy clubs in the country, I think. It, it certainly it is. is one of the best comedy clubs in the and country. And where the faces, uh, the faces, so. the heart, the soul, the liver, the pancreas. <laughs> The anus, the ratty smelling room. <laughs> That's not us, by the way, everyone. That smell. Well, I'll speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> My mates carried on walking down the strip and uh, like the way home and looked back at me and I'd folded all my clothes in a corner and was just walking by the cone na- naked. Oh. Possibly I should not have fucked her cousin at their grandmother's funeral. But, you know. <laughs> oh, well. You didn't, you didn't That's say gonna, that. That's going to inspire revenge, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. What's happening, everyone? Uh, thanks for downloading Hot Water's Green Room podcast. Before we kick off with today's fantastic episode, I just want to let you know how you can support the podcast. You can join up uh, as a YouTube member at Hot, Wa- Hot Water Comedy on YouTube. Sign up to be a podcast member for £3 a month. You get early access to the public episodes and a bonus episode each week. Not only that, you'll get access to all of the podcasts that are coming on the Hot Water podcast podcast community channel it's going to be the place to come for podcasts in the northwest i hope you enjoy the episode thank you hello everyone welcome to hot water (laughs) hello everyone and welcome to Hot Water oh. Comedy's Green Room Podcast. I am back after a few weeks off. Unfortunately, I had a loss in the family. He's a selfish bastard. Rest in peace. Uh, yeah, so, welcome to Hot Water Comedy's <sighs> Podcast. I'm Tony Carroll. And me, Jay Hutchins. It feels like I've not been here for ages in real world time. Because um, we haven't. Because we, you know, we bank record our little peek behind the curtain. And it feels like I've not been here for ages. I've not seen you in ages. No, I've haven't. been on... I've been on holiday as well. And we're joined today by a very special guest, Mr. Nick Page. Yes. And, and I've not been here <laughs> ever. <laughs> ever. Not in this room. Which is like ages and then a bit. What it's, do you make of the smell? It's quite ratty. It is quite ratty now yeah. you mention it. Yeah, it smells a bit like, like the back end of pets at home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what we give our guests, mate. Um, <laughs> how are you, mate? We're in between shows here at Hot Water. Uh, early show was lovely once the racists left. Yeah, one racist left. <laughs> or was it racists? It was a couple. Oh, right. I mean, often they attract each other <laughs> yeah. and repel everybody else. Well, hopefully they yeah. get home safe. <laughs> yeah. we, we can only pray. Yeah. Yeah. They're all about people going home. Is this your uh, first time at Hot Water Comedy Club? Uh, no, I've been here quite a lot. Oh, yeah. 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 Binti seems to tolerate me, so yeah. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. It's it's one of the best comedy clubs in the country, I think. It, it certainly it is. is one of the best comedy clubs in the and country. And where the faces? Uh, the faces, so. the heart, the soul, the liver, the pancreas, <laughs> the well, anus, the ratty smelling room. <laughs> That's not us, by the way, everyone. That smell. Well, I'll speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I've been Turkey for five days. I'm not saying they stink, but I stink because of it. Well, because you couldn't have a shower the whole time you were in Turkey. Well, I, I got a lot. And then you came back and bought a gerbil. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how I roll, baby. <laughs> um, Anything to declare? <laughs> no. It's <laughs> this gerbil and my genius, as Oscar Wilde said, <clears throat> probably. Um, so, <laughs> thank you, Benny. It's quite highbrow for me. Appreciate that. <laughs> that's some appreciation. Still, I'm going to get home. What was the podcast about? Mostly Oscar Wilde. <laughs> <laughs> and Richard Gere. He likes to gerbil up the arse. Was it a gerbil or a hamster? I know it was one of those. Oh, it was a hamster, gerbil. gerbil. Okay. And I'm also aware that, like, for every generation, there's a different person who, has a, now, now, who had a rib removed so they could suck their own dick. Oh, know? yeah. I remember Madeline Manson, it was. My, right. Uh, and then yeah, for mine, know. it was Mark Almond. <laughs> yeah. Um,. From Soft Cell. Yeah, yeah. And then talking about this with my mother in law, um, Mark Boland from T Rex. Oh, so. oh, I remember T Rex. Yeah, really good band then, wasn't he? Yeah. Really good band. Who's the next Great generation? band, Terrible Driver. Who's the, ne- <laughs> yeah. Who's the next generation? <laughs> That's what we want. So, who should, do you reckon we should spread it like this generation? It's Jamie Hutchinson. Just, That's a good shout, isn't it? I won't suck mine. We'll say you. Because it smells of rats, yeah. Hanging. <laughs> 
Yeah. It's all, <laughs> it's all bulbous. The balance barely comes out anymore. <laughs> it's a fucking bomb site. Um, I hope someone else dies. We can't even get another few weeks off. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Turkey on a stag do. Yeah. All right. And uh, one of the reasons why I smell on the. I blacked out every night. Okay. Which is, you know, a badge of honour for me. Yeah. Um, stag do, was it your stag do? No, or? no, no. God, no. I'm never getting married. You should. I get married loads. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> How many are you on? I'm on four now. Four? Yeah. yeah. Fucking hell. That's good, isn't it? I can't even get a text back. <laughs> I'm a hopeless romantic. Stole this. <laughs> and my brother's a jeweller, so you know. <laughs> um, I uh, yeah, I was on the stag do. My mates, mate stag do. Uh, first night I was blacked out and woke up. Apparently, I was throwing kebabs on the street and all that kind of stuff. But that's their culture, isn't it? Kebabs and that. Um, the second night was the worst. I got lost from the hotel. Okay. We only went the, the the strip was ten minutes away from the hotel. But you have to go around corners and that. And I'm no good with corners. I'm okay. a straight line person. Um, so I didn't know my way back. Lost my mates. Walking around for three hours. So I thought, right, I'm going to have to have a kip in this doorway. So I have a, I get my head down for an hour in this shop outside this fake Armani shop. And um, I woke up. I've got a bit of a black eye, but I've cut on my nose. It's quite sensitive. Um that was an introduction to the Turkish police because he, he was hitting me with a baton to yeah. wake me up because <laughs> he didn't want to touch me. Oh, is that what it's off? Yeah. Were you in Marmaris? Yeah. I don't... Yeah. I'm yeah. Sorry. Marmaris is pikey as fucking full of fake Armani chips. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think he was tapping, you know, it's fucking bad, that. Yeah, no, I think he well you. It was pretty sound, you know. Oh, what, was he? Yeah. yeah. For a guy who was hitting you with a stick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of all I, the people who hit me with a stick that day, yeah. he was the nicest. But the, well, I've been hit with um, a bat on before in Magaluf, and he was well more rough. Okay. He was bad with it. <laughs> Most people compare <laughs> Your trip advisor is really weird. <laughs> <laughs> nice beach, bat on Three the stars. <laughs> yeah. Doorway comfortable. <laughs> Would recommend. <laughs> Didn't get tasered. Yeah. Yeah. Three stars. So he took me to the um, fucking taxi rank. I don't know why, but he had to start somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know the name of the hotel. Right. So I'm in the taxi rank describing the logo, and it's black with white writing. You must know it. And they're like, nah, get out and that. So I walked again for another two hours. This yeah. is five hour walk now with an hour kip, six hours total. Found a petrol station. Yeah. And then I sobered up by this point and I came up with one of the best survival tips of all time. This is amazing. I can't believe I didn't think of it. Piss. It's one of the best solutions to a problem ever. Okay. Right? Go in a petrol station if you ever lost abroad and ask someone to Google local hotels and just hope you remember one. That is quite smart it's of you. Quite smart, isn't it? Did you remember it? Yeah, I, I've watched a lot of Ray Mears and he's never done that. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing when you mentioned Ray Mears, they said they wouldn't Google something for me unless I bought something. So I had to get Pringles. So I, had, I had sustenance for the trip as well. Yeah, that's fucking great. And then you remembered what your hotel was when they said the name. Well, I knew it was Club Something. I kept on calling it Club Lira. Yeah. Because Lear is the money and I just got confused. Okay. Um, and it was Club Seema. Shout out, Eddie at Club Seema. Fucking super bloke. If you're ever in Marmaris, go to uh, Club Seema. Uh, get a pint off Eddie. Don't speak to the other one because he said he killed someone when he was 12 and he scared me a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, and what was Eddie all right? Was Eddie like? Eddie was a buzz, yeah. Was he? Yeah. yeah. One of the think, lads? Yeah, I think he's a barber. Um, uh, and then, uh, yeah, found my way home. Uh, but it was a six hour walk for a 10 minute journey. Oh, God. Nice. What time did you get in there? I was half six, seven. Yeah. yeah, I got kicked out of an old south. My mate said the next day, the back, it's like a real tight strip, like proper tight tunnel. And um, the bouncers were sort of like playing pinball with me because no one would let me in anywhere. So I just stumbled out the strip like that. I thought, I'm going home then. Wow. Amazing. Third night I blacked out. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought it was sound because I, I, woke, I, I woke up fine. Okay. So I thought, I'm, I'm fine now. I'm fine. Not being hit with a bat on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not swapping <laughs> Pringles for internet privileges. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so archaic, doesn't it? Yeah. Like swapping a goat for a wife and that. Uh, Are you sure it was just batting? 
I think so, yeah. I don't know. He ate me with some Pringle tube. <laughs> Could have been as Willy. <laughs> I hope so. Bit of action. Um, that, he has, he's hit him hard there, hasn't he? Mm. I don't Look at that. It's, it's sensitive to touch. But yeah. He's got a fucking he's shiny. Not, he's not battered, man. It could have been worse. Mate, you've got a fucking black eye. Yeah, this sounds He didn't right, just man. go like that, wake up, did he? Yeah. He's I went, was, fuck off. I was snoring. And then when you went like that, then he's went, oh. Yeah, but you don't know how comfy this doorway was. I was fucking kippered, mate. Yeah, I know, but I'm just, I'm just, I'm just concerned. I just think it was repetitive soft taps. Do you like them p- horny sticks? Where you don't have to hit hard, you just have to tap, but they send like shocks through the ass. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? You've been married four times. <laughs> <laughs> this, this has gone from like a weird police brutality thing to some Fifty Shades of Grey bullshit. <laughs> People will know what I mean. Oh, you don't hit hard with the stick. Oh my God, I'm going to have to get what it's called up. I'm not into all that. Anyway, um, to the third night, my mates, I, I'm fine. Oh, I'm fine now. Lost my passport for a bit. That was a bit nerve wracking. Yeah. Um, found it under the mattress, thank God. <laughs> um, In the correct hotel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I woke up still pissed and everything, and that's a good sign. Yeah. Not waking up hungover because you can just. I went down the pool, I'd half a gram of Coke. Yeah. So, and then I'm level now. Yeah. I'm on a level playing yeah. field. I was on minus two, now I'm on zero, which is good. Yeah. Where I was waking up and over, you're on minus eight, and the coke would send you to a minus ten. Did you get your coke over there? No, we mate chucked oh, it up his ass. Yeah, yeah. I was say, we're playing a bit dangerous, doing that over there, like. Yeah, I know. It weren't the best, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Um, and then, so I thought, I've, I've, I've done all right here on me last night. <laughs> done all right here on me last night. Um <laughs> <laughs> and my mate come down and he went that was a bit of a weird ending wasn't it oh no no what and you know that picture of me crawling yeah that was the beginning of my journey home so I started crawling on the street yeah and then uh, threw up everywhere my mate had to pay 200 lira about a tenner uh, <laughs> for the bloke to clean it up um, then I was berating him for cleaning my sick up <laughs> saying that's my sick what are you doing with my sick? <laughs> just being Larry, just being a knob. Yeah, you know, I can't. I just turn into a different person. I just have lose all my inhibitions and stuff. And then um, my mates carried on walking down the strip and uh, like the way home, and looked back at me and I'd folded all my clothes in a corner and was just walking by the cone naked home. Jesus Christ! Because I did, I did wearing bare feet on. Grounds it helps with anxiety, so I got bollock naked and just got with one with nature to walk home. <laughs> and how was your anxiety? <laughs> was your I'm anxiety sorry. at a higher or lower level than when you were being jabbed in the face with a baton <laughs> by a cop? That's what I mean. I woke up fine, and now you're here. And now I'm here, but um, they put me they put me clothes back on. And then uh, I had a piss in a bin. Yeah. And that was it. That was my... How many days did you go for? Four? Three. <coughs> Three. Three nights. Three nights. Drank every night, yeah, obviously. Oh, mate, didn't stop. I think I had one bottle of water while I was there. Any food? Yeah, yeah. Like a, a bit. It's like a burger and chips a day and that. Yeah. But other than that, I was just fucking... Just woke, kinda. woke up, beer, bang. We had a flight, late flight home as well, so we had to check out the old toilet. And just sit around 12 ages. and just sit around in the pool. Yeah. So that's why I got on the beak and got back on it, just to drink through the pain. When does it stop? I, I had a day off yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been sleeping bad as well. Sorry, Nick, I'm not. Late. No, that's quite sorry. right. I've um, <laughs> I'm I'm just, happy to listen to yeah, this. Yeah, I think uh, we have yeah. to, don't we? Nick? Yeah, that's true. Because I need to get it off me. Yeah. Chest. But I've not. I've not. I don't know. Well, it's amazing that people that are full of coke in doorways <laughs> frequently don't sleep that well. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been I've been home and I've been really sleep deprived. And I've I've been woken up by a shadow the last two days I've been at home. I've just been woken up with proper fear and a shadow looming over me. Yeah. Right, and then did you go barefoot on the grass to, <laughs> to get rid of that? Around me. <laughs> His mum's like that, Jamie, put some clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> it's called sleep paralysis, isn't it? Yeah. I've it's, had it before. I've it? had it before, it's not good, that. I've had it before without the shadow over me, just stuck to my bed. 
Yeah. But this one, it was proper intense. Was it? Yeah, man. It was just a copper with a baton. <laughs> <laughs> he'd, fo- he'd followed you over. Yeah. <laughs> Mum, get one of them sticks out your room. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the ones that you don't have to hit very hard, but they sort of send you shivers. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Sends you ripple up the arse. God. Sure, I've seen that, man. Oh, are they called arse ripple sticks? Is that what it's? <laughs> yeah. Arse ripple sticks. Arse ripple sticks. Ripplers. Yes. Yeah, little ripplers. So, how do you sleep at night? <laughs> Better than that. <laughs> She's got four wives. She's a great sleep. Wives. Like, not at the same time. Oh. I'm not a king. I'm not the king of Tonga. <laughs> Shout out the king of Tonga, he listens. I, w- I would hope he does. <laughs> He's picking up tips on where to go in Turkey. Yeah. And whether he needs to buy crisps in order to get on the, have online. You had, have you had any good holidays? I've had some lovely holidays, and I've had some terrible holidays, yeah. and I've had some good stag do's, and I've had some terrible stag uh, do's. Give us the terrible ones. Yeah. Terrible stag. I went to what should have been a lovely stag do in Bath, of all places. A stag do in Bath? A stag do in Bath, because the guy who was getting married had gone to university there and had a lovely time there, and he'd booked us a hotel, but it was full of all the cunts from school that I hadn't seen since oh, then yeah, yeah. some of the hilarious is it a, is it a boisterous group or is it they were all they, like they'd all become London bankers and oh, were okay. like desperate to f- flash massive amounts of money in strip clubs oh, and yeah, what, yeah. I I kind of went off the reservation a little bit so I remembered being with them sitting outside a pub having a bit of a smoke and then I was somewhere else having some cocktails with a lovely lady Ooh. And then I was standing on a big bridge with her, watching the sun come up, oh, and I can't remember the time. And then I was back at our hotel, but I'd gate crashed a 100th birthday party champagne breakfast with some old ladies, <laughs> and I remembered out like sitting with them wearing a crown and a sash. And then I was, and it was this was when I was doing daytime telly, so they were like desperate yeah. to have their photos taken. Thankfully, it was like pre Instagram because that shit would have been all over it. Yeah, yeah. And then it was four o'clock in the afternoon. And I was back home, sixty miles away, and my car was parked outside, and I'd clearly driven back, like fucked off my face. Oh and I remember God. nervously walking around my car and making sure there wasn't a cyclist stuck in it. <laughs> yeah. it was, I, was, I was really panicked. <laughs> Because I was like, I've clearly driven back, yeah. and I've no like the last thing I remember is like I was still wearing the sash. Like I remember breakfast to be champagne with old ladies, hundred year old in the and, back. And now, the best part. now it's now. That was that bit was better than the rest yeah. of the yeah. stag with those dick. And then I I couldn't go to the wedding because I was worried that somebody at the wedding would mention all the shit that had gone on to my then Ooh. like now second ex wife. Do you know what you should have done? Took your clothes off. <laughs> then I'd have been less anxious about yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But that's fairly like you know, I wasn't brutalised by foreign police. Yeah, so yeah, you know, true. and and then yeah, I had a horrible holiday in Tenerife once. Where I'm not a Tenerife person. Let's yeah. let's Why? get that. Well, well, because I've Tenerife person. I've worked really hard to become middle class. Oh, right. okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've like I I you know. I always find it funny when I'm in Liverpool when I'm the person that was you know, raised by a single mum on benefits and I'm the one with the massive criminal record. Um, but, yeah, oh, yeah. I, yeah, mostly white collar, but like a few other bits. But uh, anyway. Oh, I, um, God. We're getting into I that. I've a bit of yeah. hard. Didn't yeah. get caught, though. Didn't you? Oh, here's tips? my big advice is if you've written a script for a stripper to read out <laughs> to a finance company because you're remortgaging a house three times, <laughs> right, if you put that in the incinerator, set fire to the fucking thing. <laughs> Don't leave it there for six weeks oh, to be found by your oh, ex-wife solicitor. No. Okay, there we go. Um, oh. Just oh. handy hints for a more peaceful I'm life. I'm so anxious right now. It's yeah. clothes off. Just, <laughs> yeah. oh. get, get naked. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you pulled them Pringles out. <laughs> but yeah, so a mate of mine said, do you want to come to Tenerife? And I was like, absolutely not. And he said, do you want to come to Tenerife for 30 quid for a week? And I was like, fuck yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it took like some friends of his had bought a flat in um, Los Cristianos when it was being built. So when they bought it, it was like this little isolated thing on a mountain, and then the rest of player had grown up around it. So it was now opposite a twenty-four hour Irish themed karaoke bar. Oh, sounds like heaven. Was, that does sound good. Fucking <laughs> sick. <laughs> fucking heaven. Um, there was this group of women by the pool. Uh, for the first three days, my then wife thought they were Polish, and it turned out they were from Newcastle. Which is just really shit accents. Where was she from? Where was your wife from? Um, Surrey. Oh, right. <laughs> she didn't say Slovakia. Yeah, no. Yeah, she was convinced they were Polish. No, they were Geordies. Yeah. She just, yeah, she'd oh, never been no. north. She's never, yeah. Well, 
So, and so it was, all false. And the, the couple that we'd gone with, every night would have like a massive screaming row, right? And then one of them would walk off, and then we'd all have to be like back in the apartment going, fuck me, that was uneasy. And then they'd be fine about By it. the next day. And this yeah. was, yeah, they would do this all the time. And she was fucking massive and would get naked all the time yes. but like you couldn't she was like she had so much overhang that you couldn't tell if she was wearing pants or not oh yes oh, God, like, i fucking love that like man. the the proper gunt yeah yeah <laughs> Guns. Jesus Christ. oh Guns. Guns that's you weird. yeah Guns, i like yeah. that Guns. Guns, so yeah. i just want to take it back a little bit because yeah. the, you know the whole criminal record thing got yeah. me like whoa, excited baby yes um, so I want to know where did it start off? Um, oh, I went to quite a posh school, yeah. and I wasn't posh, so I would always. Was, so be, that was so you was sing, raised by a single mom, and, yeah, 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 and yeah. then and then wanted to that lifestyle. So you've yeah. So like it started boss. off obviously shoplifting and doing a bit of robbing yeah. and a bit of dealing. Yeah. Um, and then when I went to university, I like did security work, which is obviously a great opportunity for dealing more drugs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, because you just confiscate shit and then sell it yeah, to other people. Yeah, exactly. oh, or sell them a bath. God. Yes. Yeah. Bad yeah. that done to me before. Fucking painful. Go on, sorry. <laughs> Buying your own beat back. Yeah. Fucking never <laughs> felt more of a cook in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a <laughs> Buy it back off you. Yeah. I'll go. On the, way, yeah. on the way out, yeah. Buy it back when, on the way out. Way in. Like Leave a deposit. Out and then just go. Yeah, they go, hey, fucking you got that thing there. Go on. There. Yeah. Do you want it? it? How much? Fucking hell. Okay. Two keys missing, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, you'd only ever get half. <laughs> so that wasn't us. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I just, I had some uh, gambling issues and stuff. Yeah. And I, when my ex wife and I were doing. Was that some, through the drinking? Was. Was that through drinking stuff like that, like and then going casinos and like stuff like that? No, it was because I I used to work in the car trade and yeah. everybody was obsessed with the horses oh, and I grew up yes. in Cheltenham and everyone was obsessed with the horses yeah, yeah. and like half the people. So Cheltenham is like quite posh, yeah, and it's got a massive Irish population because if you come over from basically everybody in County Cork comes to Cheltenham for the races and if they lose too much money to go home, they have to stay in Cheltenham for a couple of years and work for Mike Connolly. Um, yeah, yeah. Who was like our neighbour? Uh, he's, he's, uh, like he's, he's a builder and he owns various pubs. So they all work for him. That's some um, commitment, though. Yeah. yeah, and they stay there for a couple of years. But literally, you, if you drive around County Court during race week, there'll be cars by the side of the road with the doors swinging open where somebody'd be driving along and his mates would go, Come on, get on the ferry. And they go, Oh, fuck it. And just pull over, leave the car, jump in with them and go. It's, yeah. it's mental. Oh, um, I love Cheltenham. So. Yeah, I think I was about 20 before I realised you had to pay to go to the race course. Yeah. I thought everyone just cut through the allotments. <laughs> and, and I, the one year, I think when I was 16, we made shitloads of money off the races because they'd knocked down the old coach station in the middle of town, which is about 10 minutes walk from the race course. So it was just like a great big empty space. So me and two guys from school stole, you know, the white lab coats from the chemistry lab? Yeah, yeah. We stole three of those. We put a sign outside saying parking five pounds all day, and I reckon we probably had three hundred cars in there by the time the first cop car came round. Cut through, still at school in time for assembly. What's that? With like yeah, five hundred quid each. So you, you always have that kind of mind, just trying to make money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like back in the in the mid eighties when people were wearing like fucked up five hundred ones. Yeah, I found out you could buy them off the American prison service. So we'd have like a container full arrive at Southampton. And then go down there in my mate's van, bring them back up, and about half of them would be unusable. The rest we'd sell to vintage shops and stuff like that. So, yeah, that, doing yeah, that yeah. at 16. Yeah. And then, yeah, running raves, um, yeah. promoting bands, doing all kinds of stuff like that. Did you do run illegal raves, did you, when it was big back yeah. then? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, back when they were still called Acid House yeah, Parties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did, yeah. We did like, a huge one in a quarry um, that, like, made national news and stuff. Yeah. Um, and they, they, yeah. And back, it was pre-mobile phones, pre sat yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so it would be, like, you'd hand out flyers... People would have to go to a phone box. Yeah. They'd get a phone call from there. Then they'd meet the guy in a Land Rover. He'd drive them. Oh. And they'd have to follow in a convoy. Yeah, um, that. I love shit like that. Amazing. Yeah. I would have loved that being put in that area. You know? I still remember when like ecstasy was thirty quid a tab, and like in nineteen eighty five when it was brand new. What's it? It was like it was really fucking expensive. Yeah. It was like. And back then as well, for some reason, because the only time I'd seen Coke when I was like 15, 16 was on Miami Vice, I thought it was like a really posh thing. Oh, yeah, and when yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, hang on, working class people do drugs as well. Yeah. Like, it blew my fucking mind. <laughs> and they get fucking stuck in, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Like, what totally line does you for the night? Yeah. It's fucking... Yeah. It's All in. Yeah. Oh, that's fucking... I remember, yeah. Uh, there was a, a mate of mine kept going over to Amsterdam and coming back with sheets of acid. 
and then he'd be like cutting them up like the old blotting paper stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, with little yeah, pictures of like Batman's paper, on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the first time I took that, there's a big park in Cheltenham called Pitfield Park, and I got trapped on the edge of it because I was convinced that if the moon shone on me, I'd freeze to death. But in the shadow of trees, it was warm. <laughs> so I was having to wait for the moon to go behind the clouds so I could run to the next tree. And it just took me fucking hours That's to get so home. Good. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then it's all of a sudden, how much drugs do like just do stuff like that here when you just, yeah. you just think of madness. I remember it standing by. You know, sometimes you see oil on a puddle and it's got that sort of rainbow effect yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah. Standing by a puddle, seeing a bit of oil on it in a street light, and part of me knew that it was oil on a puddle, and part of me thought that it might be a time portal to take me to the 1960s cartoon series Land of the Dinosaurs. <laughs> That might not even exist. <laughs> like, so really, that fucking puzzle. specific. So I'm standing there literally for hours going, Do I step in? Do I not step in? Right. And then it got light, and there are, there are people coming past me on their way to walk, and I'm still at like work, that, and I'm still standing yeah. there going, Do I step in? Do I not step in? <laughs> so, you know, things are a lot tamer now that I'm a responsible <laughs> yeah. parent. Yeah. 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 So, then, so then, after after that, then after, you know, yeah. the, the them years 15, 16, and, and, yeah. and dabbling them with, with kind of. So, what, where did it go more professional, serious kind of um, stuff? Uh, well, to cover my debts, I was like... Yeah, after gambling. Yeah. yeah. So we were doing some property development stuff. Yeah. Part of it was accidental. So my then wife was a like chartered accountant and qualified lawyer working yeah. for one of the, like, the big six firms. I signed a couple of mortgage documents while she was away in Germany, I think. And like we got that mortgage, we did up that house, we sold that house, moved on... Five years later, when I'm not with her anymore, this all comes to light. Ah, uh, right. Oh, and it's, it's what's called a strict liability offence. So even though she hadn't lost any money and the bank had been paid back, I'm still Liable. up for a quarter of a million points, pounds yeah. worth of Just fraud. So, yeah, I got done for a quarter of a million pounds worth of fraud. And I thought I was going to go down for about seven years. And I was hell. very lucky to get a suspended and, yeah. like, 200 hours community service. And the community service was fucking brilliant. What was you doing? Uh, mostly go into a forest and burning trees. <laughs> oh, did you? It's fucking amazing. There's, amazing. It's, there's a place called Western Burt Arbor. It's like this world-renowned tree collection. And there's like an area of pine trees that they were just... Because they didn't have enough projects for dickheads to do. <laughs> so we'd just be sent there to like cut down a tree by hand. Like if they, were, if they wanted that tree down, it would take 20 seconds with yeah. a chainsaw. And I was like, I've got a chainsaw. Shall I just come and cut the tree down if you want the tree down? They're like, no, that's not the point. It's all got to be done by hand and then cut into little bits and then burnt. So we'd have a bonfire. Um, and there was this, there was this girl doing community service as well because she had like some anger issues when she was drinking. And she and I have become really good mates. We're still mates yeah, now, like awesome. 15 years later. Yeah, she, made, she made the cake for my last wedding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so by like week three, we were bringing like potatoes wrapped in foil to cook in the yeah, bonfire. Yeah. And then, like we're having, yeah, chili con carne and, and baked spuds out of the fire. <laughs> and it's a, it's a really good... Some, yeah, people do that for fun. Go oh, yeah. Camping well, some like. of the time we were, we were at Tewkesbury Abbey repairing the gardens of Tewkesbury Abbey after the floods alongside people who paid the National Trust 50 quid a day to do the same thing. <laughs> Like, and the, shots, the thing really that r- like really I thought was weird you know when you get those bin bags through the door from a charity saying like put out old clothes on Wednesday yeah. so we were delivering those so the charities would pay the probation service to have a van full of little cunts like sticking bin bags through people's doors and the people doing community service are, like divided into two groups so you've got like middle class people who fucked up yeah. and little cunts will be in and out of the system forever. Yeah. Yeah, and the yeah. big difference is the middle-class people turn up and do their community service and get it done and get it out of the way, and then they're gone. And the little cunts will either have committed another crime and had more hours, or they don't turn up, so they yeah. get taken back to court and they have more hours. Um, but they loved it, because they were like, this is brilliant, we can see who's in and who's out. So they were, you know, like, <laughs> oh, put it yeah. through the door. Yeah, they, <laughs> they've, idea, they've got it? a dog. Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. that kind of thing. And, uh, <laughs> it's just, it's always opportunity. Yeah, it's always, yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. always an opportunity. We had, we had a day where we were, away. there was, a, like, a, a, a college for blind people, and they wanted the doors all painted yellow and the door frames painted purple, so it'd be, like, maximum contrast. Yeah. So people who are partially sighted can see the doors and use the doors. Yeah. And they ran out of materials halfway through, and they're like, well, we're going to have to end the project. And I was like, but like, there's a Dulux decorator centre. Like, why don't you phone them up and get them to donate? Yeah. And they were like, oh, we don't really know how to do that. And I was like, well, shall I do it? Because I'm good at talking people into stuff. That's why I'm here in the first place. <laughs> um, and they're like, you're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not really supposed to use the phone. 
And I was like, well, let me just see. So I phoned them up, oh, and yes. then, yeah, of course, they come down, they donate the stuff, they get the local paper yeah, down. Yeah. The project had to end because one of the little cunts stole a load of watches. They were like vibrating alarm watches. Like, in fact, like all open spot comics have. Um, <laughs> Patsy was an open spot comic. Anyway, he stole, a lo- he stole a load of them. And I was like, the only people that could have stole them are us because yeah. we're the only people that can see that are in the whole fucking building. Yeah. Um, this is one so- pretending. <laughs> so yeah, it was, yeah. Now all the fucking blabby, we've got to get the headaches bumping into the doors. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fucking hell. Uh, yeah, because I got done in, um, I worked in the bookies. Yeah. And I had a gambling problem as well. Um, so I was betting on my own till, but credit betting. Yeah. So I would just build up a, a debt, then pay it at the end of the day. Right. And one day it just got out of hand and I, I had to just change losing slips to winning ones and stuff. Yeah. And um, I got caught when they did an audit and stuff. But I think they, they, I faced a panel of people in the disciplinary, yeah, and they just took pity on me because I went in all like I'm going to defend myself and all that kind of stuff, um, and they were showing me uh, pictures of CCTV of things I was doing, yeah, like doing coke in the shop, yeah, drinking vodka in the shop, walking around naked to deal with your <laughs> <Well>, anxiety, <laughs> being hit by a Turkish policeman, well, swapping Pringles for internet access, same old, same old. <laughs> Well, I was keeping the shop open because some drug dealers uh, wanted to use the shop yeah. because they used it to money launder. Yeah, I facilitated it technically, but yes, it was you know they chucked me twenty quid and it was yeah. a dead famous gang. So I just went yeah. So as long as I can say you're my mate, <laughs> that's a fact. Um, and there was one video where I put my finger through the pocket of the zip of my jeans, yeah. of my pants. I'm pretending to masturbate because um, a fit girl from another shop had called. Right. <laughs> so, the, and they've got the still of me like that. <laughs> and they went, "Can you explain what you're doing here?" Yeah. And I just had to very meekishly say, "I was, uh. I was putting my finger through my zip to uh, pretend to masturbate." <laughs> I st- when I first got daytime, te- so I started doing comedy, and then I got like a daytime telly gig doing a property show, kind of by accident. Because I was an estate agent with a bit of life, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was I got called into a disciplinary with my boss and his boss on the day that I was going to quit anyway. Oh, that's so crazy. they're like, yeah, nah. we've we've had a, a complaint about some of your behaviour. Uh, was it on the telly? So was it the complaints through people, the viewers watching it? No, no, because I hadn't, hadn't started at that point. I oh, hadn't right. even started filming. But I was oh, yeah. I was like due to go off filming for three months. Oh yeah, and I was like, yeah, so I'm gonna, yeah I was going to quit my job because I hated it. Yeah. And, I was like, yeah, I'll give. Oh, a st- sorry. Oh, so you, you get sorry. You yeah. get in a job or not? To, yeah. You, before you but go on, they were like, like, but because I was, I was already gigging at that point. Yeah. yeah, I, didn't really either. yeah they were like, well, you've put like a thousand miles a week on your company car, your fuel car that's supposed to be just for appointments with customers. You're filling up the car in like in Newcastle yeah, and yeah. then Cornwall two days later, and, and like, um, and you keep turning up late. And then uh, I came into the office and you were asleep, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, um, I think I should quit. And they were like, "What well, you're aware of how serious it is, and so you want to resign?" I was like, "No, I've been offered a TV show, uh, so I'm going to go and do that." Yeah, fuck you. Uh, uh, and they were like. Oh, well, I mean, obviously it'd be quite good for the company's name if you were yeah, uh, associated oh, with that. Oh, you're joking me, the little fucking yeah. snake. So they paid me for six months to not work there, and I got to keep my company car for six months as well. Oh, oh sad, eh? Yeah, and I put another 30,000 miles on it. I lost the job falling asleep in the office. Yeah. Yeah, and that was through gigging as well. Really? You know, the late nights, and then started to do the nine to five, so you get in from a gig late. Get to like the, the last coach. I wasn't driving, so you have to yeah. get like the last coach home or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get in at two, three in the morning. Yeah. And then trying to get to work, and I was in the office. It was winter, remember? I was working in um, Liverpool Mutual Homes. It was like yeah. a, um, it's like a, it's how to explain it. It's like a, it's like a like a firm that does out, does council houses up and stuff like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Looks after them for, for the council, yeah. obviously. So I was in there, and I was working in the HR office. <laughs> So I fell asleep and work in the HR office. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, Big so, so yeah, I, it was winter and it was, it was freezing and I only had a few hours sleep and you know, you're not worse when, yeah. you know what I mean, you get up in the winter and you just, get, just got into work and it was dead warm in the office, I remember it. I just going like that, nodding off and I was thinking, I can't fall asleep here. I like the office was just like five, six people but the yeah. desk were here so like, you couldn't see, you couldn't like blend it or nothing no. or, or hide away from it. It was, it was yeah. You're just there in an open Apparently, pan office yeah. fast asleep. Apparently you left me late for an hour. We, when I was selling cars, <laughs> I was working for Volkswagen and our dealership was like L-shaped. 
Yeah. And if we had a new model coming out, like a new, you know, like the new Golf launch or something yeah. like that, what we'd do, we'd always do the same thing. We'd have the new one round the corner with a cover over it with like not to be revealed until like August the 1st or whatever the date was. And then, so if you had a customer who was like a little bit on the, you look, look, I'm not supposed to show you the car oh, and the flash oh, until nice then. If you just want to come round now, yeah, yeah. and then you'd like whip the cover off it, and they'd be the first person to sit in it. And I whipped the cover off it one day, and my mate Scouts is in the car asleep. He's just, <laughs> he's just, he's just like, lifted, lifted up the edge of the cover and climbed in. Yes. It's all, he's got the seat. That's amazing, that. <laughs> that. That would make me more inclined to buy it. Yeah. It's more. It's just more honest. Yeah. I hate the you know the fucking. He, that he was, that's, that's smart. What he done there? Though, uh, he was a mate. He was one of those people. Like, say his target was to sell twenty cars in a month. By about the 10th of the month, he'd have sold 20 cars, and then he would do not Lush, a fucking yeah, stroke yeah. for the rest of the month until... And he just lived to fuck about. Yeah. So when I was... just about really good salesman, oh yeah. Really, really yeah, good salesman. Yeah. Lovely, lovely guy. Lived to fuck about. So my job, I was like the finance guy for a lot of the time. Most of the 90s, I spent mis-selling PPI. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the way it was set up, we had like this big office uh, in a fairly rough bit of Bristol, and so I would look like a sort of serious bank manager in a pinstripe suit, and they'd lead people. We used to call them my babbies, because like Bristol, right, my babby? Oh, yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. all like, you know, talk like pirates, marry yeah. their cousins, those people. <laughs> um, we'd lead them in, and then I'd rook them on the finance. But because the office was so big, there were like filing cabinets over against one of the walls, and quite often someone would come in and get something out of the filing cabinets. So I'm chatting to this couple. They've got their back to the filing cabinets. Someone comes in, gets something out, they glance over someone comes in the second time they might look, by the time someone's coming the third time they're not even looking because they're just like, talking to me about all the stuff so the fourth time somebody comes in it's scant bollock naked so i can see him and i just like <laughs> just like <laughs> just don't grinning. look yeah don't look don't look, don't look. <laughs> amazing we used to do a thing as well so called calm the, though called yeah <laughs> yeah the, so no what anxiety for him <laughs> very no anxiety whatsoever <laughs> We do a thing called the stupid phrase game. So you'd be talking to a customer, and someone would come up with a little bit of paper. And go, look, look yeah, sorry yeah. to interrupt. When you're when you've got two seconds, could you just phone this guy back? And you'd look at the bit of paper, and there'd be something you had to say to the person yeah. you were with. Yeah. So like, if they looked a little bit like a, say they looked a little bit like a gypsy, you'd have to say, "Can I tarmac your drive?" Like that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, we used to play games like that in comedy. So be in a green room. Yeah. And someone would give you. A way to say or, yeah. or or do something, and we had to do it. You had to do it. If they had thick glasses, it would be prescription windscreen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got the phone. There was a phone box opposite our dealership, like outside a post office, and we got the number for the phone box. So it started off. We'd like we'd phone the number if anybody lent their bike against it. Like immediately, you'd phone the number, and they'd go they'd go in and go hello, and you go, can you move your bike? And they go, oh yeah, sorry, and never question it. And then the local radio was doing like weird phone competitions. So we'd phone them and then we'd go, hi, we're calling from GWR, your local radio station. Do you listen to GWR? And they'd go, nope, doesn't matter. In a few seconds, we're going to be live on air. I'm going to ask you to say the phrase that pays. I listen to the Better Music Mix on GWR and you'll have won between 500 and 1,000 pounds. How does that sound? They go, yeah, sounds amazing. All right, okay, so we're live on air in five, four, three, to hi who's there oh, it's tom in kingswood tom uh what radio station do you listen to i listen to the Berry music mix on gwr <laughs> tom you've won a thousand pounds wait there for the black thunders <laughs> which are like these vans going around giving out prizes and then you see them standing on the edge of the road just, go, <laughs> just waiting there waiting for yeah oh. like once one of the black thunders came past the guy nearly got run over like leaping out in front of it it's just amazing <laughs> oh, that's I've done like takeaways, see mates house and all that kind of yeah, stuff. I've yeah. worked in I worked in telesales for a bit, right? So I, I did um, a PPI, you know, the back end of it where we got all the refunds and yeah. took a cut off the top. So of between course, between the both, we both fucking double teamed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, so we we used to do games like that for sneaking them on. But there was a there was a side to the company that was a debt management company. Yeah, and it was run by someone who I knew who was one of the directors of a big debt management company called Baines and Ernst back in the day mm-hmm. um, and what they did it was a proper dodgy company so at the you, you have a, a thing what's called payment run you have to pay the creditors yeah. everyone's credits goes out on the first Yeah. so everyone's direct debit could be the 10th or the 15th yeah. whatever their payday is and everyone waits and then we pay everything on the first yeah. all out and what they used to do every year for Christmas was the December payment run did not go out and that paid for like a country club for Christmas due so like wow. 30 grand and we just did it and then they just email each because we're dealing with the creditors yeah they're not having correspondence with the person who's in yeah. debt so 
we just cover for them. I'm yeah. sure they're a bit short this month, blah, blah, yeah. that sound. Resume payments in January. Resume but, payments yeah. in January. Yeah. When I was selling finance for, like, bearing in mind these are like the main manufacturers, so like Ford, Vauxhall, yeah. Volkswagen, when you're doing the customer's finance deal on the computer, F9 was pencing. <laughs> so say you'd agreed like, 48 months at £252.13 a month. Like, right, so it's two hundred and fifty ish pounds a month. You just F nine, it would just round it up to two hundred and fifty two ninety eight, and you were targeted on doing that on eighty percent of your deals, like just rounding up and just adding an extra eighty ninety p a month. Yeah, but if you did that on like well, a yeah. couple of hundred deals a month over four years, it added like you know a, a several grand to the bottom line. Yeah. Every single every single month, so everyone was targeted on that. With the PPI thing, we were all targeted to sell PPI on like half of our finance deals. Yeah, yeah. There was a guy called Coxie who was getting it on like ninety percent of his deals, and they were like, "Right, what's he doing?" And then two months later, it was like he was sacked, and we never talk about him again. <laughs> yeah, what he was doing was he'd sit down with the people and go, "Look, I know you said you didn't want PPI, and I respect that. You're right; it's a waste of money. It adds twenty five quid a month to your policy, or whatever it yeah, whatever the amount was." we've got a competition on at the moment to sell as much of it as we can to win a holiday and I'm really close to winning and I really want to take my son on holiday. So, what I want you to do, sign to say you'll have it, here's a cheque from me for 25 quid to cover it for the first month, to cancel it after a month. Because we got 200 quid a policy whether it ran for a month or four years. Ah, oh, right. And he said, he said half the people would never get round to cash in the cheque anyway. He said most people would forget to cancel it after a month, so it'd run like three, four, five. So it wasn't like really obvious. Yeah. But he'd been doing that for years. He'd just tell people, "There's the money. I'm going to pay for it for the first month. Cancel it after that." Yeah, we got in trouble for selling on cancellation as well. Yeah. So I used to work in car insurance. Right. And my big target was uh, breakdown cover. Yeah. As included in the policy, so we just go just can't. After two weeks, yeah. If they cancelled on the fifteenth day, we'd get the fiver for the sale. Yeah, because cancel after fifteen days, so that's what we was doing. Yeah, so you get free cancellation, and it would cost about a pound to cancel after mm-hmm. the fifteenth day anyway. So just cancel it for us. We was yeah. doing that, got fucking in trouble for it. I don't know why. Just let them make the adults. Yeah, I don't Do you know what I mean. They should be ripped off. <laughs> 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 fucking thick cunts. <laughs> we used to do this as well. This is bad. So um, it was very, you know, uh, you know, proper. What's the word? Like real David Brenty, like yeah. chat, motive. Like yeah. the, it was run by you know someone who'd finished tenth on the Apprentice or something. Yeah. Like, guys, come on! Yeah. And they broke down four types of customers. Yeah, it was like competitives who were assholes. So you got to sell them a particular way. Yeah, logical. They will ask loads of questions. You got to sell them a particular way. And then, like, the soft cunt ones. So, like, <laughs> like, That's the technical term. Yeah, the soft all cunt sales ones. courses. Yeah. Yeah, soft cunt so ones. You, get, you get a soft cunt one, and, you, and you, you, this is how I used to do it. But you've got to understand, it sounds harsh, but it's a fucking ruthless world. If your stats aren't in, you're getting bollocks. Yeah. You've got to get them in, mate. Yeah. So, um, women. Uh, <laughs> if you're a kid in the background, just go, oh, just... There's a call of creative and they want to be sold on a journey. Yeah. And you notice where they're from. You put the nearest seaside towns. So, oh, do you go buy them and the kids away? And I drive there. Yeah. Shame if you broke down, the kids are in the back. <laughs> what, you this is a nice shop. <laughs> yeah. Pity if it caught fire. Guilty of single mums. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Geez. Not always single mums, but if they've been left in charge. So in, them, in the car trade, we'd get a lot of people like competitors, yeah. definitely. If we had a customer who was a particular dickhead, We'd put an earring in his car. We had a drawer of earrings from Claire's accessories. Earring under the back mat. That's going to surface at some point in the next six months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a while, we had... Ruin lives. Uh, yeah. So, uh, back in the 90s as well, we'd always get like a little Chinese guy coming in and selling us rip-off DVDs. Like, always selling pirate DVDs. Like, the, the Chinese DVD guy was a... There was another little Chinese guy that used to reset mileages as well. <laughs> They're good, aren't they? Yeah, mileage, mileage correction services. He used to advertise in the local paper because it's not illegal to change the mileage on a car. It's, it? it's illegal to sell a car that you know the mileage has been changed on without telling people. What but it's not illegal to change it. Like, yeah, it's ridiculous. Like, it's ridiculous. So, so you'd that. go, oh yeah, no, I was uh, I set it to kilometres because I was driving abroad, and then when I came back, it stayed on kilometres even though it's miles. So can you 
like take off 40% of it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I was driving through a thunderstorm and then lightning struck nearby and it went up 70,000 miles. Can you, can you just wind it back a little bit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, had, um, we used to get lent cars by manufacturers because we had like a rental company as well. And we had this huge, it was a, uh, it was nice easy trooper, but it was the one that was made by Vox. It was Vauxhall Monterey. Yeah. And everybody, like if you were going on holiday, you'd take that because you could get all the suitcases in it. If you were nipping over to do a booze cruise, you'd, you could fit like a ton of, of you know, bottles of wine in the yeah, back of it. Yeah, yeah. If you were moving house, you'd get that. For, so everyone used it and was supposed to send it back to them when it had done 10,000 miles. And all of a sudden it had done like 25,000 miles. So we popped it into the workshop, took the speedo out, wound it back. And then someone was like, well, I've got it booked on the ferry this weekend. And I'm like, all right, sorry. But this time we must send it back when it gets to 10,000 miles. We had it for about two years, and it just kept going just back kept into the back. workshop. Yeah, it must. By the time they had it back, it must have done one hundred and fifty thousand miles because everybody was using it for everything. <laughs> and at one point, I went into the workshop, and they're laughing because they'd taken the speedo out, and someone had written on the back of it, "Fuck, not again." <laughs> I um, when you mentioned with the earring thing, yeah, uh, what we did on the phone one, it's not as bad as that, I don't think. But um, if we had when in the uh, we used to do pension reviews as well, yeah. and it's a free service and everything, but people were just we've got your data through, you know, yeah, it's been just ransacked since we're just calling out the phone, but basically, and you're just getting called a cunt for calling people. Anyone who was nasty to me, I'd um, I'd sign up their email address for junk mail yeah. um junk mail posts and everything but if it especially if it was a particular type of man particular you know masculine I'm going to fucking come down there and all yeah. that sign them up to loads of gay websites yeah. with their email so we <laughs> we did loads a similar thing like, with our, yeah. our, we had a, a company accountant called Tim who was a dickhead and he was just like eh, he was it was just one of those really mean spirited people and so we'd do everything we could to wind him up uh, like one time he was like if you hit this target then you all get like an extra cash bonus and I'll take everybody out for dinner and because he didn't expect us to do it so we hit the target we go to the, this restaurant for dinner and he's like right I'm paying for your main course and your first drink and everything else is on you and then he, he stupidly goes to the toilet so Scans <laughs> orders a bottle of champagne for everybody <laughs> as the first round of drinks and oh, Tim okay. comes back and everybody's got a bottle of champagne with a straw at the top <laughs> he, he, fucking berserk um, he he was convinced like we had a coffee machine and we're like can we get tomato soup in the coffee machine he was like no because it's one and a half pence more a cup than tea and coffee so we gathered oh, together all the pennies we could find and they gave them to him in a big bag going now can we have tomato <laughs> soup <laughs> you know I mean? terrible but we used to if you had to work on a sunday you'd go through the sunday papers and the sunday supplements and you'd put his address on everything uh, yeah, yeah. and apparently he had like an extra sack of junk mail every day <laughs> for like conservatories <laughs> stair lifts yeah, just everything like saga holidays crazy. every fucking thing <sighs> Love doing it. Don't piss us off then. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was my it. version of putting heckles down before I did stand up. <laughs> I had it in there. Bang. Fuck off. I just hate them. I just can't stand people who are being rude and trying to rip them off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, long, the how, how, how long have you been doing a stand up now for then? 20, 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. And yeah, I did my first gig for a bet. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Started, yeah. I went on a stag do. Afterwards, I had to either do a stand up gig or pass myself off as Belgian. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why those were the alternatives <laughs> and it was like a weird thing so I, I knew like I'd never been to watch stand-up before apart from I'd seen Alexi Sale at Cheltenham Town Hall like in the mid 80s that was it that was yeah. all the stand-up I'd ever seen and I'd seen a couple of acts that were doing like a university tour when I was at university but yeah. I wasn't one of these people who was like you know loved comedy, loved comedy watched yeah, loads yeah, of it yeah. it was just like yeah you you're you think you're funny see if you can do it on stage yeah. and there was a comedy club in Bristol called Jester's and I knew that a friend of my brother's wife knew the guy that owned it somehow. Yeah. So I got his number, phoned him up, and I was like, hi, I need to do stand-up for a bet. I was thinking I'd come down, like, um, not next Saturday because I'm busy, but the Saturday after, <laughs> and do, like, half an hour of my stories and stuff. Would that be all right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and thankfully, he really wanted to fuck this girl who was, like, the friend of a friend because he was like, that's not how it works. You need to do, like, a five-minute open yeah. spot first. And I was like, five minutes? How could you be funny in five minutes? Yeah. i got loads of stories. They all last ages. Um, <laughs> and, it, and he was like, look, there's a thing on a Sunday night at the, this pub called The Bunch of Grapes, um, um, come to, in fact, if you come here first, then I'll take you down there and introduce you to everyone. Bring Emma. Uh, yeah, you should <laughs> definitely bring her. And um, and uh, yeah, then the day before, he's like, she is coming with you, isn't she? So I, yeah, I was, yeah and then he Fair just like that, yeah. letched over her and I did went he, down. And, did he fuck Emma? No. Oh. 
Uh, but he used to run Jester's used to be a really good comedy club I, re- I, remember, I remember that yeah did, did and then fall, didn't it, it, it was well, yeah so when it was in its original it? venue it was lovely it was, yeah. it was kind of like hot water because it, yeah, yeah. it was like a low ceiling and everyone wrapped around the yeah. stage similar sort of numbers and it would sell out Wednesday, Thursday, Friday Saturday some, yeah. you know, sometimes two shows on a Saturday it was yeah, perfect yeah. Yeah, yeah. but over the road from it was this massive venue that had been like a 1920s cinema and then it was a magic club and he really wanted to buy that and he really wanted to to, to do. sell oh, his wow. place and just, turn it into flats yeah. and he bought it just before the 2008 crash and the smoking ban oh. borrowed way too much to refurb it and it was also it was the wrong room it had like a yeah. massive high ceiling yeah. never got the atmosphere and then it kind of went it went from there to he was then doing it in a theatre above an art gallery and yeah. then in a theatre in a school and the brand just died and then in the night, just yeah, yeah. just fucked That's and then, fe- I'm sure that that Club is featured on it. There was a documentary in about 2006 following a comedy agency. Right. Have you seen it? It's no. got um, Rudy Liquid on it. Um, that bloke who passed away on a cruise ship, he was on it. Phil Butler. Eh? Phil Butler. Phil Butler. Yeah. yeah. He's on it. Um, I do hope that when I die, people pretend they liked me as much as they pretended they liked him. <laughs> <laughs> like the number of people that were saying, oh, he was a genius who we sadly missed, who two weeks before were going, he's a hack cunt and he's never changed his set in 20 years. <laughs> Rest in peace, Phil Butler. <laughs> is dedicated to you we've got a Ouija board if you want to come on next week <laughs> mm. hello everyone welcome board. to Hot Water Comedy's Cleaning Podcast this been week's sent- guest is Phil Butler <laughs> from beyond the grave <laughs> isn't it amazing this cup would show up <laughs> but yeah not to worry you the Number of comics that have got to about fifty who've had heart attacks are all the ones who absolutely caned it on the beak. So yeah. you've got, <laughs> you got that to look forward I to. I, I've got I've got nine years left. I'm thirty one. If I'm past forty, I've failed. I've let <laughs> your mates down. I think you should. I think you should calm down. Oh, no, what be the first to go? Let me feel the best. I think you should calm down. I'm having a few days. Look on. at me. I've been off the ale <laughs> four days now. Four. Four days. Uh, with none of us since four we days sober. I am, and I've been in the gym today. Well done, you. Thank you. I got woke up by a shadow. Did they have like a like a, a vending machine? You really wanted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jim! No, it was Jim's Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, Jim. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't want to live really past forty because uh-huh. then anything past that just existing in it. I, what am I? I'm fifty-one now. I yeah, think but my, you've, you've lived a life. I have lived a life. I yeah, but you've yeah. got responsibilities. You've got children. I, I've not I, got kids. I, yeah, I've not got kids. It's quite weird to realise that. Yeah, like having the kid at fifty, I'm probably I, not going to live long enough I, to I, see him married. And do you know what I have? Stuff. You will. Oh, You're in good shape. I'm in a shape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a rose between. Is that two when you had forms. a baby? Fifty. Yeah. Fifty. Yeah. Yeah, he's eighteen months now. So yeah. Hell, yeah. Yeah. Didn't he's, you say he was forty nine on stage before? Me? No, I said it was on my 49th oh, birthday right. that my wife said we should have a kid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If there's any uh, TV in <laughs> 49. <laughs> I, have, I, have a, I have a Penny Smith to my age. <laughs> uh, I, I'll tell you what, I have become quite attached to. It's not quite mm, the level of a kid, but there's a smell in my room that. Is I, it the ratty gerbily smell <laughs> that you brought here? <laughs> It's got Change mo- your underpants, it's got, Jamie. It's got more depth than the, the smell in here. Yeah. And I've, I, at first I thought, oh, that's a bit moody, that. So I did some gigs on the Isle of Man. So I was yeah. out for f- four days from my house. And uh, when I come back, it hit me, the musk. You know, because I've been living in the musk. The musk. I've not noticed it. Yeah. But when it when I come back, it's like, oh, it's a wall again. And same when I come back from Turkey, it's like, oh, it's a wall again. <laughs> but I, I at first it was a bit... Oh, I don't know what it is, but now I'm I'm quite fond of it. Yeah. And I don't really want to find out what it is and get rid of the problem. Um, a few years ago, a mate of mine shared a house with a bunch of people that were horrible. And they'd <laughs> constantly be eating his food. Uh, if he went away for the weekend, they'd have a party and someone would crash in his room. Like, like, yeah, just like pop, petty pop, shit. Yeah, yeah. So when he left, he left them a note going, I have hidden a shit in your house. Good luck finding it. Oh, that's yeah. that's and nice. he gets a text from them going, where is it? And he's like, I'm not fucking telling you. And apparently they like they're they're looking like in cisterns behind cover everywhere can't find it. After two weeks, he gets a message going, "We haven't found it. It's not here. You just said it to wind us up. You're a cunt. We're glad you've gone." And he was like, "It's still there." Then, after a month, he just gets a message going, "We found it. Oh. You're the worst cunt on the planet." Oh my god, was where it? was it? What he'd done? He'd taken a pot of I can't believe it's not butter, <laughs> emptied it out, 
shit in the tub, and then packed the butter back over the top of it. So it was like potted shrimp. And obviously the person who found it was buttering some toast. And initially he just thought it was a bit of marmite on the knife. I love revenge. I wonder what that is in mind then. I'm yeah. going to have to see where the butter is. There you go. Yeah. Well, if it's like it's still under the butter, that's, you wouldn't smell it. That's fucked up. That <laughs> that's my favourite ever revenge story. Before yeah. that was a revenge I did on my brother, uh, who was living in the centre of Cheltenham, and during race week, I listed his house as a bed and breakfast. <laughs> 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 and that's amazing, man. I remember it, it used to be like machines in service stations to print business cards. Yeah. yeah. I printed oh, no. out 500 business cards listing his address and phone number, 24 hour reception, late availability, and paid a couple of students 20 quid each to hand them out in pubs. Oh no! He was getting calls for about five years. Why? What did he do to you? Um, fitted a gate and then took it back. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly logical. Oh, oh no! I do. Like, I don't think I've ever revenged someone. I've been. I've had a lot of things done to me. Yeah. But I just like it's like I can't be asked. Okay. Maybe I should plot. I don't think plot, you should plot a little revenge trip. I had a pool ball through me bollocks on my 18th birthday and I've been egged a few times and sat on fire. I can't uh, fish with dad ones. Uh, the main ones. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can't fish with dad, yeah. <laughs> he come to, come to one of my gigs. I was, about, I was in, uh, I was in uh, the laughter house about, about 19. So, yeah, yeah, about 19 just started. So, probably about yeah. a year in. So I'm 30 now, so about 11 years ago. And uh, he come. Me, me dad and my dad just want to fucking prick. So, he just, like, thinks he's funny than everyone else. Yeah. And, you know, like, just... Just wants the attention himself, you know what I mean? Gobshite. And um, he, he come to watch me, and he was a BBC writer there at the time. And I was doing his character act, and he really like really like 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 the character. Yeah. So he was talking about maybe you know doing some writing together, or it was a good opportunity when you're just hearing. Yeah. And my dad come and just absolutely fucking ruined the night. He just heckled me and just <sighs> like and just proper yeah. like not even like good heckle. It was like yeah. shut up, fatty, or you know like just sort of just like yeah. I just, and I remember, because I was only, like, quite new in, I just folded, like, didn't have anything to say, but I just went, just died on my ass. Yeah. And I thought, I'll never forget that, never. A few years later, he's, um, he, he doesn't really, have, no no bear puts up them, because he's a gobshite, you know what I mean? So, yeah. he, he just went, he was just brand new on Facebook and stuff like that, so, and he's always come to me, sister, some of my sister said, what we'll do is we'll make a fake profile because he's a fucking idiot. Yeah. You'll think it's real. You know, get a picture on Google. Fucking blonde, blonde hair, big boobies. Yeah. Profile picture. Fired him to message them. Speaking to him for about two weeks. <laughs> yeah, so it was good, yeah. But, uh, Catfished your own dad. Yeah, That's fucking yeah. awesome. Well done. Thank you. But yeah, it was. It got a bit weird in the end, you know, like when he was like so sexually and all that. <laughs> yeah. So we had to cut it off. It's going to be a pretty thing love. where you're like, where is the point where... My sister said, stop after two days. Did you ever I reveal? just carried on. Yeah, I went, walked downstairs and went, that was me. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I, I swear, he's... Oh, I, still he in was, the house with him, that's brilliant. He was, um, he was... <laughs> He was like saying, like, oh, I don't really get on with my kids, but I love them and that. You know, and all, all, oh, yeah. going all deep and that. I was going, oh, you little pussy. God. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. You should, so have you, met him, you should have met him on a first date. I, I, well, I've, 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 I wrote a joke about it. I yeah. was on stage just recently when I got it once. And it's about catfish and my dad. Like, that's a yeah. true story. It just yeah. ends there. But me, I've just went and fucking, I've, and I, I've just went and done it. Like, I dressed up and dragged and met him, and you know what I mean? And like, yeah. I ended up fucking going back to ours and then he's shagging him. That's, that's the joke, <laughs> but yeah, it's really good. Oh, fucking hell. I, I need to learn how to do revenge properly. Because I think I'm going to get him back, and then I just fucking can't be arse anymore. I'm not going to hit me. I've not Joe, got you'd the... be good to do that too. You know, well, you do do revenge on your, on your stepdad. Oh, that's well, more... It's, it's, it's like petty revenge, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's not revenge. It's not shitting in butter, is it? It's, le- it's leaving the table. <laughs> it, know, it's it's, it. <laughs> it's leave me have a bit of a petty like back and forth. Passive aggressive. Yeah. 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 So we don't we don't ever have an argument, but there's just that thing. He's yeah. pumping me mum. He don't want me there. Yeah. <laughs> so she can be loud in that. So she can get a stick out. <laughs> yeah. With her special waggling spanking stick. He's the shadow that's over you. <laughs> and my mum's the smell. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, my mum's oh. pump, pump juice. Oh, fucking 
know. <laughs> that's what it is. They must have shagged. I bet he shagged me mum in my room. That's in, what when it I was is. in the Isle of Man. <laughs> Maybe they were both just really handshagged. <laughs> 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 oh. oh no. She's, she needs to change the bed sheets. She squirted in a sock and left it near the oh, radiator. That's it though. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, I found my mum's dildos once. <laughs> and they had tide marks. <laughs> <laughs> my mum my oh. used to do and summer's parties for dinner yeah. ladies and that specifically <laughs> for dinner ladies the dinner yeah. ladies of Gorton yeah the dinner ladies of Gorton <laughs> so we had these doesn't that sound like a proper <laughs> shit like comedy show on Channel 4 yeah. the dinner ladies, ladies of, of Gorton. Gorton let's write that that would be good that <laughs> you know dinner ladies of Gorton yeah um, has there ever been a sitcom about the dinner ladies yeah dinner ladies <laughs> I've seen <laughs> it was set in Gorton Dinner ladies! <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. Oh. And this uh, Chef White. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't watch fucking Channel 4. <laughs> <laughs> Silly. <laughs> How did she just kiss her Channel 4? Oh, fuck. What's on Channel 4? No, BBC. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch Bravo, lad. Oh, um, oh. Yeah, my mate said all my mum's dildos around. Yeah. Um, after a party. And uh, so I woke up, I was going to the fridge, there was a dildo in the fridge, there was a dildo under the stairs, dildo in the kettle. <laughs> yeah. Dildos everywhere. So going around, picking up all my mum's dildos. Some weren't opened, some yep. had the odd air on. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine you put them in like a golf bag. <laughs> <laughs> like a dildo caddy. <laughs> <laughs> what are you watching tonight, Mum? Oh, I recommend the six-inch rampant rabbit there. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm, adding, I'm picking up all these dildos because my mum's coming back from holiday. Yeah. So I have to get all the dildos back. Got them all back. And ten days later, someone came to read the gas meter and the, the gas cupboard one fell out. Nice. So that was my shit in the butter. Oh, God. <sighs> do, you know the, do you know the, the TV show that you were doing there? What yeah. was it called? Escape to the Country. Oh, I know it's that. Still, it's still running now with like yeah, proper yeah. presenters, but I did like the first three series. <laughs> I was still shit at can it. Can we still watch it? No, because I got ah. a little, because I then got done for mortgage fraud. Uh, the BBC <laughs> yeah. got rid of all my old episodes. <laughs> yeah. Escape to another country on yeah. the run. <laughs> <laughs> also, because I was doing that, I used to do quite a lot of like voiceover work for bank adverts and things, and weirdly that all dried up when I had a fraud oh, conviction too. Fucking hell. Yeah. And it wasn't even fucking true either. Oh. He, like he, he, he his, his first wife was he first wife? Uh, yeah. First, because my uncle a bitch. Yeah. You're a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> You've nearly ruined yeah. his life. But look at him now. He's better off. He's a comedian like us. Look at us. How well we're doing. Yeah. Hell have no fear, fear, fury <laughs> over a bitch scorned. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Isn't it? Possibly, I should not have fucked her cousin at their grandmother's funeral. But you know. <laughs> oh well. You didn't. You didn't that's that. going to inspire revenge, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. Is that, you reckon, is that why she went She went to Turk then, yeah? Yeah, and obviously I had, yeah, also yeah, written some checks off her account. And yeah, yeah. Used her money to stay has in she, hotels. Has she, got, has she got a bit of money, like? Sorry? Yeah, has she got a bit of money? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Not probably she went through a couple of years with less and then she's all... She's like yeah. a... Yeah, she's like a partner in one of the big six accountancy firms. She's yeah, got yeah, shitloads. True, so, yeah. 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 Certainly, I would have been better off if I'd stayed married to her and been less of a cunt about it. But you wouldn't be happy? I would not be happy, no. And that's what's important, guys. Life. You've yes. got to be happy in life. I'm now married to someone happy nice, are. which is good. Yeah. I went through a, like a phase of like having relationships with people I didn't like because I thought it would teach them a lesson. <laughs> 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 there was one point. Uh, you, know, you know, Silky? <laughs> Yeah, 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 it's all right. Yeah. So Silky's been my best man a couple of times, yeah. um, and he was supposed to be my best man for. I was supposed to be marrying this girl, and then I like phoned him up, going, "Oh yeah, mate, you don't need to be best man on that date because I'm I'm not with Victoria anymore." And he was like, "You were never going to marry her anyway. Anyway, you couldn't have got married then because you're gigging for me." <laughs> and I was like, "What?" And he he was like, it in the diary because yeah, he knew he said, you weren't married. Yeah, he said he printed the posters. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. He said she was a twat. You were never going to marry her. And I was like, oh, fair enough. <laughs> what a friend. Yeah, That's good great. friend. Like Silky. That's well. great. Uh, right, I think we'll wrap that up, Nick. Thank you for coming on. I'm going to go down and do uh, the Late Show. Um, thank you for having sweet. me. Sweet. Yeah, um, if you ever need anywhere to stay in Cheltenham, Nick's brother uh, <laughs> is running a bed and breakfast there. Uh, take your own butter. <laughs> take your own butter. <laughs> uh, what have you got to plug? Anything? 
No, I don't do any podcasts. I'm not on Instagram. Um, Real old school. If anyone's watching this, has got a lawnmower company. <laughs> I'd quite like like a. I mean, if you are going to get, it's got, better be a good one. Uh, yeah, I've got fly quite, mo, get in touch. No, I don't want a fly mo. I, I, what I want is one of the like the big Husqvarna robot mowers. So, uh, you, have you, we should, got should much, have one of the ones that you sit on? I've got a sit on one. Have it? Yeah, it's oh. lush. I've got a few, yeah, but uh, doing well. I've got a backyard. I'm doing well. Doing well. Like yeah. <laughs> I love Facebook Marketplace. Oh, if I ever I won the lottery, that. I would buy a dictionary for every cunt on Facebook Marketplace that can't spell chest of drawers. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh god! Um, live show nineteenth summer. Yeah, you, you fucking know what it is. I There's a post out, out after, there somewhere, isn't it? Is come on, at, come and see us live. Come and see us live. Get your um, ticket. Actually, is the tickets left? Because we're so fucking good. I think they're sold out. Where is it? No, they're not sold out. Water but. Comedy Club. The best comedy club in the world. Com. Um, yeah, right. I'm gonna go find out. Uh, try and find me one's pum pum sock. Um, <laughs> tone it. Anything you want to plug? Uh, I'll see you again soon. See you soon. Bye. Bye.